let's talk about Blender add-ons. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you'd know I'm a huge proponent of using Blender add-ons. They save you time, resources, and most importantly, sanity. So today, I wanna to discuss the power of the hard ops and box cutter modeling add-ons. Now, keep in mind, there are many different tools out there, but these are my personal favorite, and they're the ones that I use every day. These tools are literally my bread and butter of hard surface modeling. The issue with the vanilla tools in Blender is that they're slow and inefficient. It's like trying to chop down a tree with a butter knife. It's gonna be a long, tedious process. So let's discuss exactly what these tools do. We'll start with HardOps. Now, HardOps helps with various Blender operations and workflows. There is a huge list of things this tool can do, but I'll condense it down. One of the things it can do is help you manage your modifiers. Now, usually your modifiers will be applied in the order you added them to the stack. So if I add in a few booleans and then a bevel, and then decide to run a few more booleans, we would need to move the bevel modifier to the bottom of the stack. Otherwise, it wouldn't affect those booleans added after the bevel. Now, fortunately for us, HardOps automatically sorts these modifiers, and you can even customize which modifiers you'd like to have sorted. However, I just leave mine on the default settings. Now, the next thing you can do is quickly add bevels, sharpens, and even scroll through your boolean modifiers. So, by default, adding bevels in Blender is pretty annoying. You have to choose the segment count, change your limit method to affect only the sharp edges, adjust the size, and also enable the hard and normals option. That is four different operations you need to perform to just get one bevel. However, in hard ops, you simply click Q, bevel, and boom. All of that is sorted for you automatically. You can already see how much time this will save you when it all stacks up. Another thing we commonly do with our models is apply different sharp options to our edges. If you're not sure what sharps are, let me quickly explain. We have four different types of sharp settings. We have sharps, seams, bevel weights, and creases but it's very important to not confuse the sharpen setting with the mark sharp option in Blender. The mark sharp option simply marks an edge as sharp, whereas sharpen in hard ops applies the four markings listed above. Now keep in mind, most of the time you won't need to use all four of the different types of sharps. You can enable and disable them as needed, but it doesn't necessarily hurt you to keep them all enabled. For example, if I wanna mark my cube with sharp edges and seams simultaneously, Simultaneously, I can simply click on the sharp and seam options and hard ops and once I click sharpen on the object Boom, we now have sharps and seams applied to our hard edges If we were to do this in blender We'd have to go into edge mode select sharp edges right click and mark the sharps and seams that way a lot more clicks than necessary I won't get into sharps too deeply in this video But if you want to learn more about them check out this video here I'll also link it in the description. And finally, one of my favorite options is to use the ever scroll feature inside of hard ops. Sometimes when you're using booleans, you might wanna move them around. Usually to do this, we'd have to find our boolean collection, turn it on, and then find the corresponding boolean cutter. And with lots of cutters, this can be a visual mess. However, with ever scroll, you simply scroll through all the different booleans on your object, and once you've found the right one, you just click, and you now have access to it. And the best part is, if you want to apply that boolean, you can just scroll, find it, and press the F key to apply that boolean. Super fast and super useful. Another amazing option inside of hard ops is the smart apply feature. This feature is one of the most powerful features because it can apply everything in your modifier stack except your bevel and weighted normals. So if I had a bunch of boolean operations, instead of applying them all one by one, I could simply go to operations, smart apply, and it will do it for me in one click. Another thing I love doing with Smart Apply is shift clicking this button. What this will do is create a duplicate of your object, apply any booleans or mirrors, etc., and then remove the bevel and weighted normal modifiers. This is useful for doing a trick that I call stealing geometry, where I can take a certain piece of that duplicate and do things like use it as a boolean, a plate, or something like this. 
Hard Ops is also amazing for dealing with more complex booleans. For example, if I want to cut a piece out of my object, I can select that face in edit mode, press Q, and then choose booleans, selection to boolean. This will basically separate that face, inset it, and turn it into a boolean operation all in one click. Usually, we'd have to duplicate the face, press P to separate it, inset it, delete the outer portion, extrude it, and then add a boolean. A massive headache compared to a one-click solution. Now, there's obviously a lot more that HardOps is useful for. I've probably only covered like 5% of the entire add-on. I have plenty of tutorials on my channel, most of which use these tools, so feel free to check those out. And if you want something a bit more structured, you can pick up our ultimate guide to HardOps and box cutter course over on blunderbros.com. Now we need to talk about box cutter. So what's the difference between HardOps and box cutter? Well, first of all, these add-ons go hand in hand with each other. While hard ops is useful for management and operations, box cutter is useful for actually performing the boolean operations. It's a lot easier to cover because it's a relatively simple add-on and easy to learn. With box cutter, you can simply press the D key to open the cutter menu and from here, you can choose to either use a box cutter, circle cutter, or an end gong cutter. The most basic one is the box cutter feature. You click, drag, and click again to lock in your boolean operation. This is where hard ops comes in handy because from here you can do things like scroll through your boolean modifiers. Also, if you want to change the type of boolean, you can simply use the ever scroll feature in hard ops, locate your boolean you want to change, and then click shift bool and find the type of boolean you'd like to change. And speaking of type of booleans, in box cutter you can also select the type of boolean you want to begin with. For example, I can press D, choose the operation, let's say a slice, and then whenever I cut it, it will use that respective boolean operation. However, I'm not a big fan of manually selecting these types of booleans up front. I prefer to stick with the default difference boolean and then press the hotkey to swap it to a different one. You can see the hotkeys or the different types of operations on the bottom of the Blender UI. So so for example, if I cut in a difference boolean and I want to swap it to an inset, I just press the I key. Pretty simple. Now the end gong cutter is also a lot of fun because you have a lot more versatility. For example, I can cut more complex shapes using the end gong cutter. Also, you can press the B key to add in a bevel while cutting. This tool is so incredibly robust that you just have to use it to learn it. One final thing I want to mention is something I call cutting the cutter. This can be pretty useful for adding trussing style effects on your model. For example, here I added in a boolean. Next, I use ever scroll to recall it. And from here, I can cut the boolean itself. By doing this, I've removed a part of that cutter, which in turn is no longer affecting the main mesh, and hence bringing back that respective portion. So if I do something like this and then cut the cutter object, it will simply reveal that portion of the main mesh. You can also get fancy with the cuts by disabling the cyclic option inside of the Ngon cutter. This will essentially solidify your Ngon so that way you can cut in cool stuff like this. And this is where the real fun begins because you can start using both tools to really speed up your workflow in Blender. From here, I could ever scroll, press the F key to apply my boolean, and then do other fancy stuff to my model in a fraction of the time. This is the true power of using tools like this. Now, I know these tools can get quite complex and tricky, so the most important part is, like with anything, start with the basics and practice. If you've ever learned a second language or are learning one now, you'd probably remember when that language just sounded like a bunch of gibberish. But as you begin to learn words and conjugations, you're now able able to understand more and more of what is being said. And the same thing applies to these modeling tools in Blender. Immerse yourself with them, use them, and eventually they'll become second nature. I used to spend months re-watching Master Xeon's tutorials over and over, but fortunately for you, we have plenty of tutorials on our channel that condenses down this information. So that's it. These are the hard ops and box cutter modeling tools, and I would highly recommend using them for hard surface modeling in Blender. 
By the way, if you want to put these tools to use, check out our free Sci-Fi Terminal Design and Blender course. It covers the full modeling workflow using these tools, and by the end of it, you'll have a much greater understanding of how to use them. I'll link that free course in the description, and I'll also link the Hard Ops and Box Cutter bundle in the description as well. Thanks a bunch for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you start using these tools in your workflow. They are so, so useful. I'll see you in the next video.